Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another lovely video in the Let's Build That App channel. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Now, what exactly are we going to be talking about in today's video? Well, we are going to go over something called a skills matrix to help you kind of determine what level of engineer you are. And the reason why I'm doing this is because inside of the software world, uh, it's kind of hard to kind of determine what exactly is a junior, mid and senior level engineer because a lot of these big companies will often post these job postings on the internet, right? And what they define as a senior level engineer uh, seems to be very inconsistent. So it's always very hard to kind of uh, track down exactly what people mean when they are referring to these different tiers of engineering. All right, so I'm going to put up the skills matrix right over here. And here is what it looks like. Uh, if you are interested in checking out this skills matrix yourself, I'm going to put a link down in the description below. Uh, the developer, his name is Bodon Orlov, I believe. He came up with this grid of items or a grid of, I guess, topics that you should understand if you are a junior, mid or senior level iOS developer. So I found that this uh, grid is actually pretty accurate in terms of how to determine what you know and what you should know uh, if you're an iOS developer. So right off the bat here, the thing that is actually not on the original image or the original skills matrix is how I actually define what a junior, mid and senior level developer is. And it actually kind of looks like this. So uh, my definition of a junior developer is someone with zero to 1.5 years of experience, meaning they have professional experience and they're actually on the job eight hours a day or perhaps more. Now for a mid level engineer, 1.5 to four years is something that I would expect and anything above five years is probably what I would consider a senior level developer. So for example, if you are an architect or an iOS lead developer, you probably fit into this bucket all the way on the right side. And so hopefully this is what I fall into as well. But uh, here's a little secret. I've already looked at this grid a little bit earlier and there are a ton of different items inside of the senior column that even I am not fully experienced with. And as a matter of fact, even in the middle tier, uh, there are some things that I don't know about. All right, so with that being said, uh, hopefully by the end of today's video, you are going to also understand how to kind of determine what level of engineer you are. And I'm just going to go over the junior column in today's video and maybe in a future video, I'll cover what's on the right side as well. All right, so make sure you understand how to do all of the stuff in this column and you should be good to go in terms of working as a full-time software iOS developer. Okay, so starting up at the very top, we have the ability of a junior developer and he should, or I guess he or she should be able to make a news app talking to a JSON API. So this is very, very simple and every iOS developer should know how to do this without thinking about it too much. All right, so code integration, we have uses Git to move code around. As a software developer, we almost always use Git, so make sure to understand how GitHub works and you should be good to go there. Uh, paradigms, we have the junior developer should have an idea of object-oriented programming. So this is a pretty abstract topic. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, someone that I hire as a junior developer, they might not understand exactly how OOP works. And as they get more and more experience with different libraries, uh, that's when OOP starts to sink in and you really start to uh, have a better foundation as to what this exactly is. Okay. Now, dependencies as a junior developer knows how to use CocoaPods. This is pretty obvious. Almost all projects rely on CocoaPods and all of the wonderful libraries that are out there. Now, moving on to a platform, a junior developer should know how to use arrays, dictionaries, and sets to build out their applications, right? Uh, it's pretty hard to build out a reliable iOS app if you don't use these three classes. Now, client server protocol, getting the JSON from the internet is a piece of cake. Uh, I believe that anything that has to deal with JSON, uh, you should be able to do it fairly easy uh, as a junior developer. So moving on to references here, a junior developer uses Stack Overflow as a single source of truth. So what this means is that a lot of junior developers rely and depend heavily on Stack Overflow to kind of find the answers to all of the problems that they have while they're developing applications on the job. 
So Stack Overflow is a great place to go to as a resource, but uh, some things that you should slowly branch out uh, into are things such as the official documentation and also maybe asking platform engineers on Twitter. And you should also be able to slowly reverse engineer some of the problems that you face uh, and that you run into. So moving on here, we have memory and you should really know how to avoid and fix a memory leak. So for example, some of your applications might have routine cycles and you should know how to identify it and know how to kind of fix and break the routine cycle inside of your application. Now for the UI, you should be able to build out basic UI using the interface builder. So the key word here is basic UI. Um, as a junior engineer, I probably wouldn't ask you to build out anything too complicated or too fancy. So for example, I probably wouldn't ask you to build out a complicated animation feature because I think that's a little bit too difficult for a junior developer. And that's something that I would leave up to the middle and senior level developers. Now, in terms of multi-threading, you should know what a async after a function call is and synchronizing all of the things. So personally, I really have not used async after at all inside of my iOS applications. Uh, synchronize is something that deals with multi-threading and how you can share resources among different threads inside of your app. And as a junior developer, I don't think this is too important, but you should slowly start to understand this more and more as you become more experienced. So for a junior developer's attitude, they should expect others to teach and guide during their development. So this is something that I do agree with a lot. Uh, as a junior level developer, or even if you're just an intern, you should really seek guidance from the senior level developers inside of your software organization. Uh, they probably have the most amount of knowledge and they can determine what the best practices are for the company. And they are probably the ones that determine what the best coding conventions are. So moving on to the design patterns, uh, you should understand delegation, target action, and MVC idea. Now, MVC is pretty common, and this is probably the first framework that we come across whenever we start out as iOS developers, right? Uh, delegation is something that starts to come into play as we build out a lot of components for our application. Uh, target action, I don't know exactly what this means, but uh, I use this a lot, I guess, in action handlers for buttons. So these are three topics that you'll get a lot better at as you progress as a iOS developer. Now the last item on this grid over here is the product quality. And as a junior developer, you should test whether or not your app works on your phone. And this is something that I don't agree with 100%. I feel like even as a junior level developer, you should understand that your application should work for all of the current available simulators inside of Xcode. You should definitely test on your own phone. And what's more important is that if you're really working at a software company, they are going to provide you with a slew of different devices for you to test on. So when I say device, I mean a physical iPhone or a physical iPad. And testing on all of those devices is something that's very, very important. So whenever you have your application built out, you should test out your new feature on each one of these devices so that you are for certain that they fit on all of the screens perfectly. Oh boy. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to determine if you are a junior, mid-level, or a senior level engineer. Now, hopefully you found this video helpful. You can go through this skills matrix yourself and make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what level or what tier of engineer you are. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button. If you want more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. That's going to be it for today. I will hopefully see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye guys.